Hello folks, I'm Alex, this is Alex Unabridged, and this is the Booktube Community Joy and Gratitude Tag. So welcome or welcome back to the channel if that is the case. Yes, a lovely little tag today. Uh, this one was created by the fabulous Pat uh, over at Book Chat with Pat in celebration of her having reached 2000 subscribers. So congratulations on that milestone, Pat. Uh, and it is thoroughly, thoroughly deserved. Um, I was tagged by Pat in this tag as well. So thank you for that tag. Uh, so let's dive straight into the prompts and uh, spread some joy and gratitude. Uh, so, first up, we've got joy. Uh, let's be grateful to the people who make us happy. They are the charming gardeners who make our souls blossom. That's Marcel Proust quote. So, prompt number one then is name an author whose books bring you joy or discuss a specific book that made you feel joyful. Um, I am going to pick the author and this is going to be Travis Baldry. Um, I've read three things by Baldry uh, to date, uh, both Legends and Lattes and Bookshops and Bone Dust. Bookshops and Bone Dust is a prequel uh, to Legends and Lattes. Uh, they are just so warm and cosy and just hugs in books um, that, yeah, they, they are full of, so full of joy for me. Um, I also read a short story by Travis Baldry recently, uh, Goblins and Great Coats. <laughs> It's got a very particular naming convention for its stuff, hasn't it? Um, and that was that was a very short story. Uh, it's just a freebie that that my buddy Troy sent uh, alerted me to, um, and so I downloaded that. And that was a very charming, joyful little experience as well. Very funny, as a very warm writing style. Uh, just I know I can turn to his stuff uh, for some really just you know. Um, comforting reads really. Um, I also will say that he is a great audiobook narrator. Um, I, I've had his books on, uh, you know, the books he's written uh, are narrated by him uh, and he's fantastic at that. And also uh, Wasteland Warlords, that series that is on Audible Plus catalogue, um, he narrates those books as well and brings that wonderful, joyful, warm style uh, to those books as well. So yes, Travis Baldry. Uh, prompt number two is discuss something about booktube that you find joyful. In all honesty, I find it difficult to single out one thing <laughs> because booktube is just all joy to me. It is the most joyful thing that I do. Um, I love thinking up what I'm going to talk about in my videos, making the videos, editing the videos, and then most of all, probably interacting with folks uh, once they watch the videos. Um, the joy of finding, you know, such a lovely community and so many friends and the joy of finding so many new books, new authors, new genres. Uh, that I've discovered, you know, that I've got into over the last couple of years that I've been involved with Booktube, both as a viewer before I had my channel and as a Booktuber. Yeah, it's all just joyful. I love it. I love it dearly. Okay, next uh, next thing is friendship. Uh, kindred spirits are not so scarce as I used to think. It's splendid to find out there are so many of them in the world. That's uh, L.M. Montgomery quote from Anne of Green Gables. Okay, prompt number three then is discuss a book that focuses primarily on friendship. Um, I know quite a few books that have kind of quite a, a, a significant friendship within them, but not necessarily, um, you know, that friendship is at the core of them. Uh, but the one that really did come to mind was Lumberjanes, which is a comic book series. Um, this follows uh, five best friends. Um, spending their summer at the Lumberjane Scout Camp um, and they are determined to have a, an awesome summer together and they're not going to let these 
like bonkers quests and supernatural happenings and um, weird critters and all the stuff that kind of introduces conflict into their midst. They're not going to let any of that get in the way. And they pull together as their friendship group to get over these, uh, get over these, uh, these adversities, if you like. Um, it's very kind of punk uh, in its own way. Um, it's silly, it's charming, it's heartwarming. There's a lot of diversity in the friendship group. Um, they are all very sort of distinct characters, uh, but they have a really, really great camaraderie as a group. Laughter. There's nothing like deep breaths after laughing that hard. Nothing in the world like a sore stomach for the right reasons. That's a Stephen Chopsky quote from The Perks of Being a Wallflower. So prompt number four then is discuss an author or a specific book that makes you laugh. Um, I like my humour very much kind of as part of a, a story. I don't tend to go for, you know, comedy stories or humorous books, if you like. Um, I like the comedy to be, or the, the humour to be very much uh, just part of an author's kind of voice or style. And one who does that brilliantly for me is Adrian Tchaikovsky. Um, you know, there's a lot of serious stuff in his books. There's sometimes some quite dark stuff in his books, some grim things. Some of the worlds are, are quite, you know, dark. Um, but he always, always manages to make me laugh, often out loud, often to the point of tears. Uh, his humour is, is sharp, it's dry at times, it can be quite sarcastic, it can also be absurd, um, and it just hits the spot for me. It's just, it, it, you know, it hits all the right notes, absolutely. Um, and I know that whilst I'm going to get quite a, uh, often quite a, um, uh, a complex book, one that will make me think, uh, sort of ask you know, big questions, etc. I will always get a laugh or several laughs from Tchaikovsky. Uh, so yeah, definitely one that I really appreciate the humour in. Community. We cannot live only for ourselves. A thousand fibres connect us with our fellow men. That's Herman Melville. So prompt number five then is discuss a book where the idea of community is important this one I'm going for a non-fiction one, and I'm going for a kind of a graphic novel, non-fiction memoir type thing uh, called Fine uh, by Rhea Ewing. Um, I don't have my copy at the moment, I've lent it out to somebody. But this, this really highlights the importance of community for me particularly, because it is Rhea's story about how they started to that they wanted to kind of explore um, people's perceptions of, um, presentation of, ideas around gender and gender identity. Um, and so they went and did lots of, you know, interviews with people, spoke to a whole variety of people from different backgrounds, different gender identities, etc. Um, and that in itself is fascinating, but I think where the importance of community comes in is that by doing this and kind of being a part of that community, it really helped Ewing get a grip on their own like gender identity, where they where they fit in, if you like, where uh, you know their understanding of themselves. And I can relate to that a lot. You know, I think when you're when you become part of a community, even if it's not one, even if it's one that's quite you know spread out and distant, and and you don't necessarily know the people really well. Uh, being a part of something where you are connected by something quite significant, uh, even if you know your experience of that is is wildly different to someone else's, uh, it helps you understand your place. I think in the world. Um, so yeah, that's that's a, a really interesting one where that that's importance of community um, for for you know understanding yourself and where you fit into the world uh, was 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 you know evident. Uh, prompt number six, then, is discuss a communal reading experience that you've had. Um, 
I haven't ever done any kind of group reads. I think that's something that I'm, I'm not necessarily that interested in, um, like big group stuff. I think buddy reads, even if it's more than just one buddy, even if it's like, you know, two buddies or three buddies, which I suppose essentially is like a group read. But I think I'd need to kind of feel like I knew the person a little bit. I, I wouldn't want to just do it as a huge group of people. Uh, but I've done some buddy reads and they've been fantastic. Um, Deb's over at Raina Reads stuff um, mentioned the buddy read that we did in her version of this tag the other day and how much she'd enjoyed it. And I will echo that and say that was fantastic. That was a book that I, you know, pro probably would have struggled with a bit on my own um, or certainly struggled to get as much out of it as I did. Uh, it was Ancestors by Alice Roberts. Um, and yeah, I, I, I kind of, it's not the sort of thing I usually read. Um, and having Deb's to chat to afterwards we had a long really great conversation about it after we'd read it made me get so much more out of that book than I would have done had I just read it to my read it myself uh, it's it's very good um and it's not that I struggled with the comprehension necessarily but I definitely got a huge amount more out of it and it was just lovely chatting with Debs because I get you know you kind of get to know the other person better as well by having that kind of discussion um, same goes for my buddy read with Nick from another booktube channel. We read Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alison Rumford. And again, that was a really important experience for me because I don't think I would have got through that book if it hadn't have been for the fact I was buddy reading it with Nick. Um, it was very, it's a very difficult book for me to read. It's a trans horror book and there is some triggering stuff in it for me uh, in terms of the transphobia. Um, but because I was reading it with Nick and we were chatting about, you know, each part as we you know, kind of split it up uh, and chatting about it as we went through it, it made it manageable for me. Um, and again, I got more out of it because Nick saw things in it that I didn't uh, and vice versa. So, yeah, buddy reads are fantastic. Absolutely love buddy reads. Uh, both on booktube and off booktube, you know, I've done buddy reads with my sister. We, we buddy listened uh, to um, Legends and Lattes again when we were uh, away on holiday in May. It was a reread for both of us or a re-listen. And that was fantastic because we could, it's one we both love and we could enjoy that together in the same room. Um, and likewise, you know, kind of reading some Max Porter with my wife. That's been brilliant recently because she and I don't read the same things at all generally. And so being able to connect with her over a book and really discuss it uh, that's that's fantastic and it also means then that I can kind of go on and find more stuff that I think that she will like that we can try buddy reading in the future so yeah buddy reads particularly absolutely love them gratitude then I can no other answer make but thanks and thanks William Shakespeare Twelfth Night my favorite Shakespeare play um, okay, seven then is name a book in which a character demonstrates real gratitude or name a book that left you feeling a sense of gratitude. Uh, I'm going to go with the book and uh, this one will be uh, A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. Um, I love Becky Chambers and probably could have answered all of the questions on here about books with something to do with Becky Chambers. Um, she is another one, like Travis Baldry, uh, who just brings me joy. Uh, she is an author of joy <laughs> for me. Um, but this one, I'm just, I'm thankful in several ways. I'm thankful that the book exists and, uh, you know, what it, what it kind of gave to me. Um, that it's such, again, another warm hug of a book. It's got such lovely, gentle philosophy in it. Um, it's got a really sort of gender positive, sex positive approach, non-binary main character. Um, it's just a really lovely book. Um, but yeah, just that kind of gratitude of, of finding that book and enjoying it so much and having it, just it being there for me to read. Um, it's a, it's a, it's it's about and it's about being kind of thankful for what you've got, I guess, as well. There's a lot of that in it. There's a lot of 
joy and community and stuff like that in it. It's kind of the book that sums up this whole tag for me, I think. Um, so yeah, Psalm for the Wild Belt. Uh, and finally then, uh, the last prompt, number eight, is of course to tag some others and spread a sense of joy and gratitude. Um, Pat, I think, has mentioned pretty much everybody that I would have done every <laughs> tagged. Um, but I think there's one person I didn't see on uh, Pat's list of, of booktubers that she tagged, uh, and that is Lecton uh, from Reading from the Depths. So if you fancy a go at this one, Lecton, then uh, do, uh, do hop on board. Um, so that will do from me today, folks. Uh, thank you very much for watching, as always. Uh, do drop your thoughts in the comments. It is always lovely to hear from you. I will be back on Friday with another video, so I do hope you'll join me for that then. Uh, but from me, for now, that's Tarath.